One of the things happening with climate change, obviously, is this relationship between environmental change well, the odd thing about the university system is you'll have people working on the exact same issue who speak in almost completely different languages. Their training is different, the background, the, the stories that they tell. And the point of the network is to get these people who are looking at the same event, at the same idea, at the same problem, to get them to talking to one another so that we can actually speak more clearly to the public, speak more clearly beyond the walls of the university. If we're going to understand the intersection between climate change and food security, we need to break that issue down firstly into understanding climate change through the prisms of vulnerability, adaptation, adaptive capacity and resilience. A lot of universities have uh, centres or institutes that are focused on climate change and most of them have been on science. You know, here is this problem that science has identified. We can bring more information to bear on policymakers, and everything will be great. Well, it, it didn't turn out to be that way. This story that we had about how we actually solve human problems failed miserably. One of the things that we're looking at is not, is not that story anymore, it's about uh, what's happening to people on the ground. And one of the, the purposes of today was to look at this shift to adaptation. Right? And, and that really is one of the key focus areas of the network. It, it's the shifting from how do we stop what's happening to how do we live with what's happening. The question is, can it adapt to this new regime? And that's a question that everyone's asking. But I think that... The thing about the network and the thing about sort of outreach to the public is that one of the things that academics have to do is to hear the stories that are coming up. Even Rosemary's stuff about the law and about the way that people are thinking in that particular area, you know, how do we get these companies to stop doing what they're doing to us? Well, we use the kind of language that only those companies will, will listen to. Or Linda actually trying to figure out how it is that for the first time in Australia you have you know, women in the countryside working with greenies, um, people that they've despised for most of their lives. It seems a more um, better way of looking at it. Climate change is happening, climate change is impacting us, and this is what we need to turn to. In the past, the idea was that if we just started even talking about adaptation, this would create this moral hazard where we wouldn't want to talk about mitigation anymore. Oh, let's just talk about adaptation. And now it's, it's no longer a moral hazard. We failed that first moral test, uh, and now it's a question of moving on to the questions that we will be living with for the next couple of hundred years at least.